Yesterday was the first half of a two-parter. This is the second half. We wanted to be able to graph parabolas. We've graphed parabolas before, but we were going to look at harder parabolas and we were going to be more precise about them. We're going to get more detail. Okay? So this was actually one of the first parabolas I asked you to do, and we went through it step by step. I actually can't remember what the equation is, but it's not important to me right now. All I want to remind you of was this. What I want to remind you of is, we found these two values. Can someone actually turn back a page and tell me, what was this value here? I think it was maybe eight? Nine. 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 I was close. Okay. And then I said to you, by the way, it's important that you know where the parabola turns around. What's the special name at that point? It's the vertex. It's important that you put the vertex in the right spot, that you don't put it, say, on the nine or on the right-hand side of the nine. It has to be on the left. Do you remember how we came up with that? How did we know it had to be on that side? We said it had to be in the middle of the parabola, right? Parabolas are symmetrical. And so since it's sort of pushed over to the left, the vertex is also sort of pushed over to the left. Okay? Now, what we didn't do yesterday was have a careful look at, well, what if you don't want to do it just roughly, right? What if you actually want to precisely know? Okay? And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to call you back to the quadratic equation, sorry, the quadratic formula, which we wrote five minutes ago. But please note this, I want you to write it a slightly different way to normal. Please write it like this. Okay. This is the quadratic formula. You've seen it before, we looked at it five minutes ago, okay? But I've done something a bit unusual. Uh, instead of writing it as a single fraction with one denominator, I've written it as two fractions with two denominators that are the same, okay? Now, tell me, on an equation like, say, this, if I went and did the quadratic formula, what does this tell me about this? Which numbers does it give me? If you went through this process, you put an A and B and C, you're going to get some stuff down the bottom. X equals something. What are those somethings? You, I've, I've actually labeled them on here. What are the numbers? You're going to get these numbers, right? You're going to get these numbers. So these give you the x intercepts. OK. Now what I want you to notice is, and um, if you've drawn this, it's going to be handy to do this next part in another color. What I want you to notice is, Ryan, you right? Yeah. Great. What I want you to notice is, if you put onto here the axis of symmetry, like I showed you before, let's just draw it as a dotted line, straight down the middle. Okay. Do you see that you'll find the x-intercepts both sides of the axis? Right. Here's the axis in the middle. One root you'll find on the right, and the other root you'll find on the left. And because it's symmetrical, they have to be the same distance apart. Does that make sense? Can you see it's sort of reflected across? Now, mark this, put your pen down just so you can watch this moment. See this, go to the right, go to the left. That way, that way. There's an algebraic meaning in here that tells you you go to the right, you go to the left. On the x-axis, which direction is positive? To the right. That is positive, which means, of course, that which direction is negative? To the left. So now I want you to look at the quadratic formula. To find the x-intercepts, you start from some middle point, you go plus some distance to get one of the x-intercepts, and then you go minus the same distance to find your other x-intercept. So therefore, looking at the formula, which is the bit in the middle? Where's the point you start from and then go either way? It's the vertex is going to lie on this middle part, which is this. Do you see that? Here's like some number. Suppose it ends up being, well actually in this case, I'm pretty sure it's minus 3 over 4. Okay. Um, actually we can check that. Is minus 3 over 4 halfway between? Minus 3, 3 and a half. Yeah, there you go. Okay. No, it's negative. Look, it's on the left hand side. Okay, so no, no, no. Once, you, once you've evaluated the whole number, if you get minus 3 over 4. There, 
is the middle. This is the axis. And this tells you, go to the left and the right. If you go the same distance away, this distance here that I've drawn in green, you get to your x-intercepts on either side. Okay? So therefore, what we can take from the quadratic formula is x equals just the front part. Just that guy. That is the axis. Okay? So if you want to find the middle of the parabola, this part here, you punch in these numbers. Okay? Now, I will ask you to help me. This was y equals, what was the actual equation? Was it minus 2x squared? I'm trying to remember. Plus 9? Oh, sorry. Yep. Okay. So in order to find this axis, I could look and say, oh, it's halfway. But I can go straight to finding what the axis is by looking at this. Okay. In this case, what's b? Look carefully. Really? It's the whole number. It's minus 3. So minus, minus 3. That's minus b. Okay. All on 2a. What's a? It's the whole number, which is minus 2. 2 times a. There's a lot of negatives there. Let's work out what's going on. Uh, I'm going to cancel a negative from the top and the bottom. Right? That's a 2, sorry. It's messy. My bad. Quadratics. How many negatives are you left with on the top? Just one. What are you left with on the bottom? 2 times 2, which is 4, which is what we said earlier. One last note, which is really important. What's super useful about this is you can use this regardless of whether you have x-intercepts or not. Do you remember we said yesterday, this gives you x-intercepts, but you might not have any. You might have zero x-intercepts or one. This parabola would have exactly one x-intercept, and this one has none. It never actually touches the x-axis at all. Okay? But you can still use this. You can always use this. You always have an axis of symmetry on a parabola because a parabola is always symmetrical. Yeah. Is there ever a chance that there's never a y? No. So I asked you yesterday, actually, um, how can it be that sometimes you get no x-intercepts, sometimes you get one, sometimes you get two, but you always, always, always get a y-intercept. Here's why. You don't need to draw this, but put a parabola anywhere you like. Okay? Suppose I put a parabola here. The part that I've drawn of this parabola, it doesn't touch the y-axis, does it? So it doesn't look like it has a y-intercept. But that's only because I haven't drawn the whole thing. That's what arrows mean, right? Arrows mean they keep going. Okay? If I went far enough, eventually there would be some point down there off my whiteboard where they would intersect. Okay? Um, you can't ever make the parabola stop. It'll collide somewhere. Okay? So that's why you always get one.